Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Hey, I thought it's time to uh, bring the Supermax build to a closure. Um, it's found a new home. Um, actually, a new local metalworking club member has uh, purchased the mill. Um, I did get everything wrapped up on it. Um, I, so I wanted to kind of go over a few things and let you guys see uh, pretty much the finished product. This is my second Centroid all-in-one DC build and it went pretty well just like the first one. Um, the second one was a little bit easier. Again, following the schematics provided by Centroid just makes all the difference in the world, not trying to deviate too much from it. Uh, but uh, let me uh, give you a walk around and let you take a look at it and a little bit later in the video we'll let you see it cutting a test part. So here's an overall view of the machine. Um, there's the power draw bar, uh, the control to the left of the head for the uh, power draw bar. This uh, power draw bar has an interlock feature that was uh, uh, programmed into the PLC so that when it is in this state, non-running, the power draw bar is usable and the spindle is locked. Okay, so here it's in the lock position and then if we hit auxiliary 7, it unlocks it so you can rotate it. And then if we were to turn the spindle on, you see it's obviously unlocked. It automatically unlocks, but since we left it unlocked, when we stop it about three seconds later, it'll lock again. You see it went out, so now it's locked again. The reason for the delay is I'll show you. When we're in real high speeds, we don't want to wear out the brake prematurely. So we give it about three seconds spin down time and then it'll lock the spindle. So let's do that. Okay, that's 4200 RPM. I don't know if you can see it up here. So it's 4200 RPM on the display. Now we'll go ahead and stop the spindle. 1001, 1002, 1003. And then it locks the, uh, the, the brake on the head. So that feature is working fine. Another feature is the touch probe. Let me zoom in on that and I'll let you take a look at how that operates. This touch probe is called the Centroid TT1. Um, allows for quick measuring of uh, tool offsets. From the main screen we go set up tool offset library. On an email you have to create a reference tool. It's basically a piece of bar stock fixed in a tool holder and that's your Z reference tool. And then the difference between the reference tool and the tools measured are what go then to the uh, library. So here it says manual measure or auto measure. So if I press auto measure, it will go down and touch off on the probe and then it'll post a value. So I'm going to zoom you back to the probe and then I'll hit auto measure and you can watch that happen. Okay, I'm hitting auto measure now. Then it says press cycle start to move the detector. So it'll come down, it'll touch it, it'll back off and it'll come, it'll approach it very slowly and touch it again. And then it'll wrap it back up. And there you see the height offset value from the Z reference tool. And then to accept that you just hit save. You can see it's in there now. So basically with that feature you just change tools and you keep touching them off. So if you, you want to build your tool library, that's a real easy way to do it rather than manually using either a one, two, three block or a feeler gauge or whatever to set all your tools. And then once your tools are set, when you're ready to do your part, you touch off on your part with any one of the tools and it adjusts the rest of the library. The rest of the library is now ready to run your part. So that's a cool feature. Now I'll go ahead and take you around the machine. We'll go handheld for that. Okay, again, there's the console and the keyboard. See our power draw bar. Oh, a good friend of mine with a laser engraver, he made a new uh, uh, plate with the uh, graduations for inches and centimeters. Again, that's just a visual reference. He made this with his laser engraver. He marked it and he cut it out with the engraver and then we used just an acrylic uh, paint on the back side to make them visible. That was really nice. Again, there's a shot of the TT1. We've got the way cover installed. We've got the Y-axis uh, cover installed. 
the little hand wheel is there. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much good use there is of these little hand wheels, um, but they're there. Um, point to note: if you do a conversion like this, you don't want large cast aluminum wheels because the uh, inertia can actually damage the control. So that's why they put these small wheels on them, or they change them out to plastic hand wheels. There's the part that, uh, the test part that uh, I cut, and I'll show you a video clip of that here shortly. And there's our jog panel, X axis servo, there's the Y axis servo, another shot of the head, there's the back side of the uh, console the arm, the keyboard, the PC, and so forth. Here's the bulkhead connector where the TT1 plugs into. You can leave that cord attached and just you can just disconnect it from here. It's got a little uh, plug on it. There's the lubricator for the machine and the airline. This is the solenoid that uh, activates and deactivates the brake and the uh, power drawbar feature. Power drawbar also has its own uh, regulator. There's our lube pump. Let's take a peek inside the cabinet here. Control cabinet's all done, about ready to go. Upper right corner is the uh, bridge rectifier and the filter capacitor for the DC servos. Um, you've got a uh, 15 position terminal block and an e-stop relay there at the top. To the left you have fuses, the two on the left are for 240 volts for the uh, Tico VFD and then the one on the right is 110 volts for the control and the servo motors. Um, of course there's the all-in-one DC. Um, that's the uh, motion controller. Um, it is a motion controller. It connects to the PC via Ethernet. You see that blue cord on the left. It's a shielded Ethernet cable. And then on the right uh, you see H1, H2, H3 axis. Those are built-in servo amplifiers. DC brush servo amplifiers. That's what makes the all-in-one DC a very attractive uh, control for upgrading a machine that already has DC brush servos. Lower left there is a step down transformer for the uh, DC brush servos. They operate at about 100 volts DC. And there you see the strain relief. Uh, it's a very clever design. Um, Centroid um, makes those and sells them. Um, all the extra cable is now tied up. You'll see a little trip light surge arrestor down there. That's for the uh, PC and the uh, monitor. Um, so I think that about covers the uh, the cabinet here. Let's go ahead and close this up. Got a louver on the side and there's a screen on it so that chips can't get in there into the cabinet. There's the on-off switch. This is the main power switch for the machine. Again, the TT1 bulkhead connector. And then I use an automotive style air filter. And there's a, about 110 CFM fan that's blowing, pulling air in and pressurizing the cabinet. You're not putting the fan in the air, air flow is this way, the air flow is this way. So it pressurizes the cabinet and, uh, and it exhausts via the louver here. So, um, you know, my daughter did a wonderful job cleaning up the machine. Kelsey showed me a little favor, and she, uh, she wiped it all down and cleaned it. it took her, no, oh, three or four hours. The machine was in really, really nice shape. I don't know that I ever get lucky enough to find one like this. It, it led a, a very easy life. Um, I think I mentioned in previous videos, a uh, place that made orthotics used it and they just uh, made molds uh, for uh, orthotics for shoes 
inserts, that sort of thing. So again, it's pretty pretty clean machine. Um, I guess that's it. Um, I just uh, I wanted to uh, I wanted to bring closure to the build. Um, I you know I followed everything that I did in very detail on my first uh, knee mill that Ganesh knee mill. So uh, feel free to take a look at those videos, and uh, if you're doing or considering doing a conversion, or if you're considering doing a control upgrade, um, it was very detailed. Um, this was just an overview of a project that I had started, and um, so I didn't get into as much detail because it was covered previously before. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let you watch the video of this test part being cut. And um, thanks for staying along for the ride. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. I'm um, getting ready to start another one. Um, it's a Phoenix 4x4 CNC router. That one's a little bit more difficult because the router is at a customer shop and I'm building the control panel here. Let me take you over to where I'm at right now on it. Give you a teaser. Here's the back panel with the components on it. What you see here are DMM Technologies DYN4 AC servo drives. Um, this is a contactor because there's going to be a remote power up, power down button, of course fuse blocks. This is using the new Centroid Acorn CNC Step and Direction motion controller. These are 30 amp uh, relays. One's going to be for uh, a dust collector and uh, the other one's going to be for the router motor. So uh, there's your teaser. Alright, so let's get on with the show. Here's the uh, video of the Supermax cutting this test part. Thanks a lot guys. We'll see you on the next one. Give it a little bit of WD. some WD on that part. The WD-40 helps prevent chip welding. You don't want aluminum to weld to the cutter and then it'll bind up and you'll sure as the world snap off your cutter.
it moves to basically machine position and shuts down. Okay, we successfully uh, machined our part.